Welcome back to Silicon Angles, the Cube here live in uh, Santa Clara, California, in Silicon Valley for a Strata Conference, O'Reilly Media's uh, big data event. Uh, sold out, great show. This is Silicon Angle's flagship program, the Cube. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here with Jeff Denworth, who's the CMO, Vice President of Marketing of uh, Data Direct Networks. Uh, DDN is a company that has really specialized in, in storage for high performance computing environments, and really this segment about, is about HPC meets big data. Uh, Jeff, welcome to theCUBE. First time on theCUBE, so it's, right, it's welcome to the <laughs> thanks guys, great to be here. Uh, first time at Strata too, so that's great. It's not actually a cube though, I mean you at least have a rectangle and some triangles going on. We're talking, we're talking to our CFO about that. Oh, we don't have a CFO, but we're working on it. The set designers are working like around the clock like L's right now, so we're going to get that fixed. Thanks, thanks for pointing that out. No um, we're big, big fans of your company. First of all, DDN, for the folks out there, go to ddn.com if you want to find out about this company. Been around for a while, uh, pioneering a lot of uh, high performance, hyperscale, um, high performance computing and storage, but self-funded, Dave. So we, you know, I made a tweet earlier that Tim O'Reilly then retweeted. I went on a little, uh, you know, rant about how the real rock stars in entrepreneurial culture is the guys who start it with no VC money and can go the distance all the way and create a durable company. Uh, to me, that's the elite class and uh, ones who can bootstrap and then get funding and grow and be successful. Well, particularly the one that's two. grown to several hundred million dollars. I mean, that's yeah. pretty rare. So. so, you know, DDN has a swagger to it. I like that. And also a big fan of John luc Chatelain, who's, uh, who came from HP, knows the space real well, understands convergence, understands the confluence of know, where this is all going. So, and he was also one of our first ever CUBE interviews at our, uh, our office when we were co-located at Cloudera. Um, so, uh, one, that's great. Um, but you guys have had a shift. So obviously object store, cloud, Hadoop, um, a lot of hype, a lot of competition now from the distribution side. But at the end of the day, there's still a massive demand for scale. Yep. And Cloudera talks about the petabyte club, uh, but this <coughs> large, large uh, use case, although small now, but will be growing in, in, on the high end. So Jeff, tell us a little bit about um, what you guys are, are doing now, what you announced, and then how does DDN look at the high end? Because you guys are kind of in that storage innovation bucket with big data, and it's not, it's not talked about much at these shows, it's all about you know, data analysts, data science, but you need a, an infrastructure to store the data. Sure. So talk about the news, the company, the news, and then scale. Okay, so um, you know, thinking about where DDN operates in the marketplace, we, uh, we have this kind of um, interesting position at the top of the scalability spectrum. And um, what comes from that is, is an understanding of scalability challenges that we don't believe that a lot of our competitors have. So um, if you look at, let's say, our average selling price, it's many times larger than our competition. Um, we, uh, for example, this month closed our first terabyte a second file system project. Uh, this is at a US Department of Energy laboratory. Just to give you some um, comparisons versus your average net, net app, ooh, oops, excuse me, uh, versus your average filer, that's somewhere <laughs> in the range of, um, you know, anywhere between 100 to 200 times the performance. So um, that's a single file system that we've deployed. And, and we do this periodically, um, you know, throughout the year where we get um, and support systems for the world's largest supercomputers or world's largest web scale computing environments. It's a, kind of a secret about DDN where that convergence of HPC and, and kind of um, analytics or web scale content delivery and processing is actually happening at DDN where we're, we're seeing a ton of really, really exciting projects where you know, you're talking about the petabyte club, John. I would say that um, anymore, our customers are starting to talk in terms of exabytes. So we're closing um, fractional exabyte orders today and we've got projects on the time horizon within just two years that we'll see exabyte size file systems ranging from maybe HDFS style file systems to traditional you know, POSIX file systems. So, so, so what are the similarities between HPC and, and big data and what are the differences? I, I think they're, it, over a long enough time horizon, they actually are exactly the same. Uh, our HPC customers, so DDN, we've been in the business for 15 years. Well, we operate in a number of different markets, but um, HPC is one of our largest supercomputing. And these guys are very frugal, right? They're, they're organizations that look at optimizing their spend so that they can move the needle as much as possible to compute so they get their jobs done quickest. So they want storage platforms that ultimately support that endeavor by delivering productive throughput and reducing their, to their total cost of computing. Um, and, and so when we look at analytics or we look at web scale computing, everything kind of converges on a, a common architecture where you've got um, clustered computers that are banging on very large data sets, big data sets if you want to use that word today. 
and um, the, from um, the perspective of the product that we're launching at the show uh, at Strata, it's, it's ultimately a cluster computer that runs in Finiband, that's powered by the world's fastest storage platform with <laughs> analytics software built in, managed with a very single, um, with, with a very simple single pane of glass. And um, from our perspective, that's not anything that's dissimilar from what we've been doing in the HPC space for the better part of a decade. So let me just try to break this down, because I know before we get down deep dive in some of the, some of the HPC stuff, so David Floyer wrote a post on wikibon.org about age scaler saying HPC means big data. So I want you to define what that means first. And then two, we've seen appliances come and go and kind of hang around out there for specific uh, installs, but you guys are more than an appliance from what I'm gathering, right? I mean, we're seeing a trend where the storage guys are becoming compute. So I want you to talk about that, that positioning. I mean, appliance, I'm thinking like it's, you plug it to rag. That's not what you're talking about here. It's a freaking system, right? It so, is a system. Or, or is it? So, so, so let me, let HPC me answer your first question. HPC big data, and so then the So from appliance. an HPC perspective, I mean, um, the whole MapReduce paradigm is just parallel programming um, and, and the distribution of processing across a number of federated compute nodes to a large data set. Whether that data lives in the node or whether that data lives on the network or in, in parallel distributed across a number of different devices, it doesn't matter. The same net result from an application perspective is the same. Um, and so our job is to, to really minimize the cost of computing, make compute nodes go faster by getting rid of all the I.O. bottlenecks. We've got a million lines of code in the storage fusion appliance that we've um, that we provided in our HScaler product to really help support that. Um, so talking about what an appliance really means though, um, truthfully, you get a system for us, everything is totally tuned, factory configured, and it's delivered to your door with just an ETL. So you get a single pane of glass interface, you get an ETL, you point your data sources to it, and you're off to the races. People can be running queries within a matter of a day. So, um, so it's, it's not really- How big is the appliance? It's big. <laughs> it's big. It's not like it's not like oh here's a box unpack it. No, it's, like, it's, you know it's an, it's, it's not like your uh, your coffee a, cup there. It's <laughs> it's, uh, it's bigger than a bread box. Um, appliance for us is about a rack configuration, and we sell um, appliance. We 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 scale we sell basically a scale out appliance where you build a number of these platforms um, in aggregate to scale to what you would see is about the equivalent of an eight thousand node Hadoop cluster today. We get to that with mm. a lot less computing, so it's not an eight thousand node cluster on our part. But, um, but so it's saw, pretty big. So I saw John Luke at the Open Compute Summit here, actually at this uh, convention right. hall a couple weeks ago. Uh, Facebook's here, and you know it's all about open source, open rack. Basically, it's, a, it's like you know open source hardware. Um, but you know, I was talking to some of the Facebook guys, and you know we had a, a hallway conversation. We had a little sit down, and you know they were saying that the, ma the, or the amount of orders that they're doing is so massive that it literally is. There's so much software projects going on. They're just ordering boatloads of gear. Yeah. So the challenge is in that, I mean, Facebook's a, a skewed data point, but you know, you think about large enterprises, they have footprint issues, right? There's, you know, you know HP has pods, et cetera, and so there's that issue. They, is that the same market you're selling into? They need all this gear, so is that what you're targeting? That, hey, here's a turnkey product? For, for our, um, so we have a collection of products, file-based storage products, block-based storage products, we sell object storage, as you all know. Right. Um, and now we have an integrated Hadoop appliance. In the case of the Hadoop appliance, we're not so naive to think that we're going to sell to Facebook or sell to Yahoo, um, any Hadoop software, because they've got more engineers than we do in staff, truthfully. Um, but that being the case, we are educating a lot of these style customers But Facebook, there's not a lot of market out there for how many Facebooks, you got Pinterest, Facebook, and a bunch of guys yeah, like that. You don't need a lot of those to make a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, any, in any case, um, so, so uh, so we, we have a reference architecture, and we put the reference architecture forward, and we say, hey, here's a better way to, to build a scale-out infrastructure. And for people that are kind of one level down, they don't have the Hadoop staff on hand, um, we'll provide an appliance, we'll handle all of that from um, a delivery and a professional services perspective. So Floyer, I'm reading his piece, he just put it up real time in the wiki. It's, and as John said, it's called uh, DDNH Scaler, HPC meets big data. Now one of the things, uh, Jeff, he's been talking about a lot is just the notion of faster IOs and, and lower variances uh, with respect to database response times. Yep. And the premise is essentially, so what he did is this great chart here, he's comparing commodity <laughs> with H scaler. And look at the cost per node, is significantly, right? So he's saying, okay, you're, just as you said before, your average price yeah, yeah, yeah. is significantly higher than a commodity, so your cost per node is 24,000 versus 17,000, but the number of nodes required, the number of cores required is significantly less. Correct. And when you just look at the hard cost, forget about the people, it comes out to about, what's that, 2.5 million versus three, about 
less over a three-year period. Which is totally counterintuitive, but right. you know, we, so, we start from so being... So like, wait a minute. This right, right. But, what, but we what's start going from being an here? engineering company, yeah. and you have to recognize that, that Hadoop wasn't really built by storage people. So as you get to a certain level of scalability spectrum, weird things start happening, like um, system failures start dragging down the aggregate cluster performance. You have Amdahl's law problem. Mm -hmm. um, the, the other thing is, um, counterintuitively, uh, people think with Hadoop, the, the processing is always shipped to the data. But in large scale systems, the, the processing actually happens 30% of the time on a node that's external to where the original job has started. So as a result, there's a lot of efficiencies that can be done by really building a, um, a, a decoupled storage system that can grow independently where you grow compute and storage um, both um, in whatever dimension you need, not what you actually get through the whole scale out paradigm. And then finally, um, you know, by providing equidistant access to all these nodes to a very, very high throughput centralized storage system that can sustain performance even when things break, that's where the, that's where the benefits really come in. We're making um, Hadoop nodes faster and we're making it easier to deploy. The easier to deploy is kind of the black magic number that, that Dave didn't even put into his uh Yeah, his he said, he there. said this, is, this does not include the soft dollars right, or anything right. like that, which, so, so which is, by the way, always the most expensive com component of the TCO, right? Yeah, but, but, <laughs> but people don't think about it like that. Right. You know, when, you, when you're making your purchase, they, right. they look at it and they say, okay, I need to just assess my acquisition cost, and that's where we started the project. We said we had to be more affordable than a commodity cluster, and the value proposition is it's simpler, but that doesn't mean that we, we get out of competing with, with the market, so um, we think we have a very compelling product. So where's the, where, where are you at with the, the beta program, or are you in, in production yet? Or? We're in beta right now, we'll yeah. be um, out of beta by the end of the quarter, so okay. we'll be shipping um, very early on in Q2. And, and early feedback, um, I'm sure it's been good, but what, you know, what kind of what's on the to-do list? <laughs> the, there's a lot on the to-do list. He's um, not going to say, oh, feedback has been horrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as I say, I answer the um, No, yeah. no, so the feedback's been great. We've actually been showcasing it ever since um, last November. We, we brought out a preview platform to um, the first trade show that it made its debut at. It's here at Strata. Uh, I think that ultimately um, where we're at is we think that we can drive a lot more efficiencies into the platform and drive down the cost of computing further through making more um, optimizations at the Hadoop layer as opposed to in the storage layer. Mm -hmm. We've done our job there, so we're going to start climbing up the stack and, and really making um, I.O. pipelining, I.O. scheduling, and, and ultimately the cost of your Hadoop cluster a lot less. Stuff that you know yeah, well, a Dave and I, Dave and a I, bit. <laughs> Dave and I always been saying since the beginning of Hadoop, as it starts to grow, you're going to start to see a lot more maturation in, in the actual subsystems and as an operating environment. Um, so you know, we see this trend, obviously, on the high end, developing fast. Uh, my question for you, kind of, the, and the segment out here is, what are you guys seeing at the show here? Obviously, you're here to do some business. You're talking to some folks. Uh, what are you seeing, and what, what kind of conversations are you having with folks here? So the, the the common thread is is this whole. I don't know who created the ratio, but the thread of you know, out of every five Hadoop projects going on right now, only one of them's in production. And so, um, from uh, from our perspective, that's a gift and a curse. One, it's, it's creating a bad name for the technology in the marketplace, because um, people are are understanding it to be too complex to deploy, or just taking considerably longer than they expected. On the flip side, um, it's an opportunity because it, it you know we're we're kind of at that cross the chasm moment, and appliance vendors are ultimately going to be the ones that get this type of technology into the enterprise. Um, you know, we're, there's a lot of talks about shadow IT and. Uh, as much as the CIO doesn't like shadow IT, it's a reality in a place where people have to do business, yeah. and if you can just deploy a toaster into an environment and say, here's your answer engine, um, that's a good thing. So we think there's a lot of opportunity, but um, I, I think Hadoop's at this inflection point where it really has a perception problem that it needs to remedy. Yeah, and we're seeing that too on the cloud. I mean, I, uh, you know, all the data that I talk to says, you know, Hadoop's terrible on the cloud, yet Amazon uh, Elastic Map Reduce from my sources is, is really doing well because of the ease of use, but they're charging a lot. Yeah. They are charging a lot for it. So not That's an optimized sure. environment, but people are using it. Yeah, well the cloud has just levels of simplicity that um, <laughs> make it easy to use. Yeah, yeah it's hard, okay. Uh, we're here inside theCUBE with uh, DDN, again, self-funded startup, over hundreds of millions of dollars now. It's not a startup anymore, but uh, founders are still around, you guys are growing, and really at a nice positioning over the past couple of years into, the, into a really fast-growing big data market from, you know, a, I don't say niche storage, but you know, storage business is now center of all the action in big data, so congratulations. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We've got the events. To try to see them from the noise, we'll be right back with our next guest. <laughs>